for each group. Uh, so we'll start off with Devin, uh, as Michael has deferred. Um, secondly, we'll go into a cross-examination. Um, so they'll have uh, a chance to uh, ask questions to each other. Um, after that, uh, there will be a five-minute conclusion, uh, followed by a Q&A for, for the audience. Um, so um, as always, uh, we would like to demonstrate that we can disagree on, uh, on topics and still be civil um, and still talk about these in a, um, in a manner that's respectful to one another. So, um, so let's get started. And we'll start the timer. Start off with that. All right. Thank you guys for coming out tonight. Really appreciate it. How do I? How do I um, move the slides? Um, Just can you get your swipe, or there's like a, you can press it and there's a <laughs> We should stop the timer then. I'll, I'll real quick. Okay. I'll I'll I can do it if you want me to. Okay. Perfect. Now that's cooperation. That's what you call teamwork right there. <laughs> yeah, you can go to the next one. All right. So really uh, thankful for everybody coming out here tonight and those watching on the, the live stream. Really thankful to uh, Mike for coming out and doing this and uh, glad his people showed up and uh, look forward to a good discussion on this. Um, you know, Ratio Christi, uh, again, you know, we do a lot of apologetics, so we do a lot of these topics of uh, does God exist, uh, is the Bible true, did Jesus rise from the dead. These are all, you know, obviously really important topics. So someone maybe from the outside might look at this and say, well, you know, Michael believes the Bible is the Word of God and God exists. Devin believes that. God exists and the Bible is the Word of God, so why are we wasting our time splitting hairs on these, you know, issues of uh, who is God. And we would say that it matters because um, who God is really determines everything. What you think, how you live your life, those particular issues are going to determine, um, I would say, your eternity. Uh, and so who God is, is is very important. The topic of the, of the discussion tonight is, is Jesus Christ God or a created being? So... Um, I love my good friend here, Mike, and, and uh, yep, same thing. But we can't both be right. Either Jesus Christ is God or Jesus Christ is not God. We can't both be right. And so it's an important topic that we need to delve into. So I'm going to be providing basically three deductive arguments that demonstrate that Jesus is God. So I'll tell you up front, I don't really know exactly uh, Michael's position, but I've got a kind of a, a hunch. I think I may know what's coming. So we'll see if I'm a prophet uh, as we do this PowerPoint and if I can predict what may be coming um, real quick. Secondly, I'm going to show the numerous Bible verses that are often used to show the humanity of Jesus in no way undermines the historic Christian faith because the historic uh, Christian faith has always uh, maintained that Jesus is uh, fully man uh, but also fully God. Whoa. Sabotage. <laughs> Work there. there we go. Is that it? Uh, yeah, so a, a deductive argument, just for those uh, who may not know, a deductive argument is an argument is, is intended by the arguer to be deductively valid. That is to provide a guarantee of the truth of the conclusion, provided that the argument's premises are true. This point can be expressed also by saying that in a deductive argument, the premises are intended to provide such strong support for the conclusion that if the premises are true, then it would be impossible for the conclusion to be false. So basically, it's just saying, oh, am I in the way or something? Oh, I'm sorry. Don't mean to block the screen. Uh, basically, it's, what it's saying is that if, if the premises in the argument are true, then the conclusion would follow necessarily. And so uh, I would say Mike needs to really demonstrate the arguments that I give, one or, or both of the premises are false, in order to demonstrate that the position that I hold is, is wrong. So again, Ratio Christi represents uh, what C.S. Lewis would call a mere Christianity. Um, that is, there are certain uh, things we would call that are essentials of the Christian faith. So I would say the doctrine of the Trinity would be an essential of the faith. Uh, that is one God who exists in three persons, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Uh, the virgin birth of Jesus, the physical resurrection. These are all things that we would maintain are essential, that if, if these things are not true, then Christianity is not true. 
But then you also have second or third order issues. Things maybe like, um, you know, you hear people arguing about the age of the earth or uh, end times eschatology. Maybe important subjects, but not essential to the Christian faith. And so what we would say is the issue we're talking about tonight, the nature of God, is not a second or third order issue. It is an essential um, of the faith. And so with that said, the discussion tonight, it's not about the doctrine of the Trinity, salvation, the existence of hell. Those are all important topics, things that I would be willing to, you know, maybe down the road we could have another discussion on. Discussion on. Uh, but tonight the main focus is about who is Jesus? Is Jesus Christ God? Some of these issues on the Trinity may come up and, you know, we can try and address some of those. Um, and then also just I wanted to point out... Um, you know, 2 Corinthians 10.5 says, we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. So we don't attack people, uh, but we do attack arguments. So, you know, as, as I'm examining what he says and he's examining what I'm said, or, or saying it shouldn't be, you know, looked at as though it's an attack. Both of us claim the Bible's our foundation. Therefore, the issue before us is going to be who is interpreting the Scripture correctly and in the context. Right? As a Protestant, I hold to what's called sola scriptura. That is, the Bible alone is the only infallible rule of faith and practice. Councils, creeds, confessions, those are all good things. But at the end of the day, the final arbitrator of truth is Scripture. So not only that, though, you also have to have the total of Scripture. So we can't take things out of context, but everything has to be a complete whole. So, um, I would say the Jesus of the Bible has two natures. He is fully God and fully man. Uh, many of the passages that I think are going to be brought up tonight are going to focus on the humanity of Christ. Um, passages that deal with the humanity of Jesus, again, they're not a problem whatsoever for my position because I affirm that Jesus is fully man, uh, but also would affirm he also has a divine nature as well. So, fully Man, fully God. Got him busy over here. See, he's uh, too busy flipping the slides. He can't take notes. <laughs> I'm, good, I'm good whenever you're good. Devin, would you like me to flip slides? Uh, would, that, would that help you? That way you can concentrate on what you're doing? Okay. If, if he's good. All right. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. All right. So there's several passages that we see that talk about the humanity of Jesus. So, for example, uh, we see in John 17, he worshiped the father. Galatians uh, 4 tells us he was a man under the law. So we shouldn't be surprised to see things like him worshiping the father, or praying to God. Uh, he's called man in Mark 15:39. He's called the son of man. Um, he's tempted. Again, he prays to the Father. Uh, he grows in wisdom. So some of, the, some of the questions that might come up is, if Jesus is God, well, how can God grow in wisdom? How can God grow in knowledge if God is omniscient? If God knows all things, how can he grow in these particular areas? Um, can God die, right? If God is this eternal, <coughs> necessary being that grounds all of existence, how can God die? Well, uh, what Christian theologians uh, would talk about is the hypostatic union. That is, Jesus has a fully divine nature and fully human nature. Yep, and he's got a body of flesh and bones, the human nature. But then we also have these passages that I say affirm the divine nature of Jesus. That is, um, he is worshipped. Uh, he is called God, John chapter 20, verse 28, remember with Thomas, Hebrews chapter 1, uh, 1 and 8 with uh, God the Father. Uh, he's called the Son of God. Um, he's prayed to. Uh, he is sinless, we're told, 1 Peter 2, 22. Uh, he knows all things. He gives eternal life, and all the fullness of deity dwells in him. So um, not only do you have the passages that talk about the humanity of Christ, I fully acknowledge those, I fully embrace those, but you also have a plethora of passages that talk about uh, the deity or the divinity of Jesus Christ. So I would say there's, there's some distinctions that have to be made. So when we're asking particular questions about Jesus, um, we need to, to make sure we're getting our categories correct. So for example... Did Jesus know all things, right? That's one of the criticisms that come. If Jesus is God, how come he doesn't know, you know, the hour of his coming? Well, in the, div in the divine nature, 
God is all-knowing. God is immutable. He can't change. But in the human nature, he's like us, right? He's a, he's a dependent being. He doesn't know all things. Uh, and so it wouldn't be shocking that in the human nature, he doesn't know certain things. That wouldn't be a count against his divinity. It would just highlight his humanity. And again, I think Philippians 2, 5 through 11 also talks about this. Uh, the emptying himself, didn't think of equality with God, something to be grasped. Um, did Jesus uh, sleep and eat, etc.? Well, yeah, in the human nature, we see these, these things in Scripture. He does. In the divine nature, no. God doesn't sleep. God doesn't eat. He's not a physical being like us, right? Uh, did Jesus die on the cross? So sometimes, you know, you'll hear our, our Muslim friends say, so you're saying God died. Well, the human nature did die, yes. The divine nature, again, a necessary eternal being that cannot die because he is God. So those are the distinctions that need to be made when we ask those particular questions. So all the passages that deal with the humanity of Jesus, uh, historic Christian doctrine has always taught and defended. Uh, so that's not an issue for us. I would say the task for Michael tonight will be to not only account for the passages of the humanity of Jesus, but also has to deal with the divinity of Jesus as well. So let's move into uh, some of my arguments here. So argument one, premise one, only God created the universe and everything in it. Premise two, Jesus created the universe and everything in it. Conclusion, therefore, follows logically and necessarily. Therefore, Jesus uh, is God. That's your phone there. Okay. So um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on premise one because I think we both agree God created everything. Uh, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Isaiah 45, 12, uh, uh, made the earth, created man upon it. I even my hands have stretched out the heavens and the earth. The host have I commanded. So I think we're going to agree God created it. The contention may come in premise two, uh, which is the next slide. Go ahead. Which is, um, did Jesus create the universe? We see in John chapter one, verses one through three, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Now check out verse three. It's key. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. Um, so, if only God can create the universe, and we're told here Jesus is the one that created the universe, John 1 is, is clearly the context is Jesus, then I would say then, therefore, Jesus created the universe. We see uh, John 1.10, again, speaking of Jesus, he was in the world, the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. In John 1.14, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Colossians 1, 16 through 20, I'm not going to read all of it, but the relevant passages, verse 16, for by him, again speaking of Christ, all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible, invisible, whether thrones, dominions, rulers, or authority, all things were created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. So I think that's good passages that would also uh, demonstrate the second premise. So argument two, only God is uncreated. Premise, um, sorry, premise one, only God is uncreated. Premise two, Jesus is uncreated. Conclusion, therefore, Jesus is God. So again, I'm not going to spend a lot of time uh, defending that God is uncreated. I think we would both agree uh, that God does not have a beginning. He's not dependent upon another being. If he was, he wouldn't be God, the being that created God would be God, right? So I think we're both going to agree with that, uh, that God is uncreated. A couple passages uh, you can look at to show that. Um, this says, the Lord, King of Israel, Redeemer of the host, the first, the last, besides me, there's no God. You can go to the next one. I'm getting low on time. Um, you can go to the next one again. And then if you guys have questions during the Q&A or doing, during cross-ex, we can bring that up. So let's get to the relevant part. Premise two, Jesus is uncreated. So I would go back again to John 1, uh, 1 through 3, that um, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God, He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, without Him was not anything made that was made. If He made all things, then logically He Himself can't be made. Uh, you could probably even use it like a Kalam cosmological argument that whatever begins to exist as a cause, um, 
course, the universe began to exist, therefore the universe is a cause. But if, if um, I'll just say, therefore, Jesus um, would not have a beginning and would not need a cause because he himself is the prime cause or the prime mover. Uh, Hebrews 1, 1 through 3, God at various times, various ways, uh, uh, spoke in times, passed to the fathers by the prophets, as in his last days spoke to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things. You can go to the next one. Uh, and then Genesis 1, 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So if you look at in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Colossians 1, 16 tells us that Jesus created the heavens and the earth. And John 1 through 3 says everything was made by him. And he himself is unmade. He is the, uh, the unmoved mover. So that's probably about, well, 30 seconds. So um, again, I think, uh, you know, what I've tried to show is Jesus has two natures. He's fully human. He's fully divine. The passages that are going to uh, most likely be brought up that deal with the humanity of Jesus are not things we would disagree with. It just has to be understood correctly in the light of Jesus' uh, human nature. So. Appreciate this opportunity to be here. Appreciate uh, Brother Devin for inviting me out and um, just a good atmosphere to discuss the Word of God. And um, I'm glad he went first because some of the things we agree on, and um, that was that was good to know. Um, it's just going to be the fine tuning of of the Word of God. And what I titled it and what we're discussing um, is basically the Godhead. No, nope, I got it oh. right here. Hopefully it works. Um, and that is who has um, all power and who is second in power? Because we believe the Bible is going to explain that God is um, the creator. He's the king of kings and lords of lords. But he has given all power um, uh, unto Jesus, um, his created being. And the Bible is going to explicitly explain that. And if we have time, we'll discuss, also discuss the Holy Spirit. And I would like to repeat Brother Devin in saying that Jesus is fully God and fully man. We believe the exact same thing on that. Jesus is God and Jesus is fully God and fully man. And I'll explain that um, hopefully to the best of my ability by the grace of God. So my objective today is to use the word of God to explain the difference between God and Jesus. That's that father son relationship, the father being greater than the son and to use the word of God to explicitly and clearly define the Godhead. That is who is God and who is Jesus. And that word clearly is um, used also in Romans chapter one and 20 when it talks about the Godhead and it says the Godhead is clearly seen. And um, we're hopefully we can see that clearness um, as we go through the, the presentation. And then finally, if we get time, use the word of God to explain why the Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost is not a person. And that's kind of touching into the Trinity. Um, as it was said earlier, the Bible, not me. Not Brother Devin, not any man is the supreme authority. So you're going to see some of the same scriptures used in the last PowerPoint slide because the word of God is the final say. We all have opinions. We all have our say in it. But what does the word of God says? This is going to be key throughout our conversation. The word of God is the authority. And it says all scriptures given by inspiration of God and it's proper for doctrine. And that's what we're really going over today some doctrine for reproof or correction for instruction in righteousness. And I was relieved to see on Ratio Christie's website when I looked at their beliefs under their statement of faith under the scripture, they believe the exact same thing 
that the Word of God um, is the um, supreme authority. If you look at the last part of that, it says um, the Word of God, the books of the Bible alone are the final authority in faith and life. So hopefully tonight the Word of God will be the final authority. Not myself, not Brother Devin, but the Word of God will be the final authority. And again, just another scripture. Let God be true. That's the word of God and every man a liar. I could be lying to you today, intentionally or unintentionally. But hopefully the word of God, I can display that the word of God is speaking the truth. Just a quick summary. Um, Trinity and binity, that's really kind of the overall discussion tonight. We're not really going to get into the Trinity, um, um, but I wanted to present that. That the Trinity states that there are three persons in the Godhead, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, and they all kind of merge into just one being, and that is God. Um, we present that the Godhead, the order of God, the divine nature of God and Jesus is in a binity. That is, is two in the Godhead. And that is God the Father is greater than Jesus, the son, does not take away the deity or the divine nature of Jesus. It just sets it in order of the Godhead, one being greater than the other. And we're going to see that in the scripture. God is a separate being than Jesus and that the Holy Ghost is the essence or power of God and not a person. Again, going contrary to the Trinity doctrine. Just want to define a person, intellectual being that can be that can reason and think. And then one word that's often used in the Bible is this word one, something being one. And in the background, you can see this married couple and the Bible explicitly talks about marriage and how it relates to the church and how it relates to God and two becoming one. That is a man and a woman becoming one. They don't merge into the same being, but they can be one in spirit. Takes nothing away from the man or the woman, just that understanding of being one, being in agreement. And that's what we believe, the oneness of God and Jesus. They are in agreement in spirit, in mind, in likeness. And just want to give you a visual of the Godhead that is two in the Godhead. And in the Old Testament, the tabernacle was very important to the children of Israel. We're not going to get into all of the details for the sake of time, but I really want to focus on this last section of the tabernacle, which is the most sacred section of the tabernacle for the children of Israel. And in this section, only the high priest could go in there and commune with God. Now we know that we all can enter into that due to Jesus' sacrifice. But again, that's not the topic. Just wanted to focus on what was in this highest, most sacred place in this tabernacle, in the Holy of Holies. And if you read the scripture, and it's in there several times, this is number 789, but you have these two cherubims, or two angels, made of gold, beaten out of one, using that word again, one piece. So one piece made out of two structures showing the unity. And we believe in this picture, in this illustration of the most sacred place um, of the tabernacle in the Old Testament, you have not one, not three, but you have two separate beings being one in unity. That is God, the Father and Jesus Christ, the Son. And God is pure intellect. God is a spirit. The Bible says God is a spirit and God is rational and he made humans rational. So in Romans 1 20, I mentioned earlier for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, God and Jesus clearly seen so that they are without excuse. So we won't have any excuse if we stick to the word of God and just wanted to throw some general uh, rational patterns, day, night, opposite, day being greater than light, night, good and evil, those pairs. This is 
really important. King and prince. King and prince. If a king has a son, he becomes prince second in command, having the authority, the power, same as the king. But he is not the king. He's a separate being, but having all the power, nobility of the king. And the Bible says, king of kings for God, prince of peace for Jesus. It takes nothing away from the divine nature of Jesus, just shows you the order of God. And then you have the male and the female, again, really going into the binity. Um, but the discussion tonight is to separate uh, God and Jesus. So we'll go on from there. So God, the father. Uh, what is God? It says in John four twenty four, God is a spirit. Spirit in the Bible is likened to wind, air. So God is a spirit doesn't have a form. The Bible also says he's invisible. So he's a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So God is a spirit, spirit being. And just I'll skip that one. Just I am. I am. I am the beginning. I am the end. I am everything. I'm eternal. We, we looked at this verse again. We agree um, slightly on this point where it says in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth verse 2 is not up here but it says the earth was without form of void so just want to put that in your mind it says God created the heavens and the earth but the next verse said the world was without form and it was void didn't have any form and it was void you're going back to, it says, God is a spirit. God is pure intellect. He just has to think the world into existence. But he gave all power to Jesus to create everything else. And we're going to look at scriptures that point to that. So Jesus is the son. This is the bulk of it. Jesus taught um, the Godhead explicitly throughout the Bible. John 17, 5. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was, indicating that Jesus was before the world. We believe the Bible explains that God created Jesus. Jesus created everything else. He gave him that divine power to create everything else. Again, going back to that father son relationship, that's the flow uh, or the sway of the Bible. Father, son, father being greater than the son. Another verse, Genesis 126. God and God said, let us again. I think we both agree that was God in Jesus there. Make man in our image after our likeness. If you follow this line of thought, man was not formed until chapter six. Again, God is a spirit. He can think it into existence. He gave the son power and Jesus created our form man in chapter six. Another verse to show that the father of God is greater than Jesus, the son. Ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away. And come again unto you, talking to his uh, disciples. If ye love me, ye will rejoice, because I said, I go unto the Father. Why would you rejoice? For my Father is greater than I. When you create something, you are greater than that something. God created Jesus, gave Jesus all the power to create everything else. Mark 13, 32. But of that day and that hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son. Again, showing that the Son is lesser than the Father, and it does not take away from his divine nature, but the Father. Uh, Matthew nineteen seventeen, And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, and that is God. Again, Jesus understood where he got his power from. And that's why he made this statement. Look, 
I'm, I can't do anything without my father. My father has given me all authority and power. So don't call me good. Give all the glory to God, my father. Another scripture, having these last days spoken to us by his son, whom he have appointed heir of all things, he appointed heir. If you're an heir, you're not decaying, but you're an heir. You have those same rights to the throne of all things, all power, by whom also he made the worlds. Again, showing that God created Jesus. He gave him power to create everything else by whom also God made the worlds. Oh, man. One minute. <laughs> oh, uh, let's see. This one, uh, this one. And I'm going to get to this in the Bible, the right hand of God. This is an Old Testament scripture that's uh, quoted multiple times in the New Testament. But look how God, look how Jesus talks about this. Uh, let's see. He's sitting on the right hand of God. Who is he that condemned is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God? He's not God. He's at the right hand of God, and he has all power because it was given to him, who also make of intercession for us. And the last one, this is very powerful. 1 Corinthians 15, 23. Um, but every man in his own order, Christ, the first fruits, after they that are Christ at his coming. For he must reign until he hath put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. God, then Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Abraham. All right, um, we'll take a minute and then we'll start our cross-examination. Yeah, let's take a few minutes break. You guys feel free to get food or drinks or whatever. We'll get kind of set up. Um, so I'm thinking... I'm thinking if we put the microphone here, it should catch it. We'll just both have to talk loud. You want to stand by that? Or? I've got a big, big mouth, so it'll work. I think as long, yeah, I think, I think we'll be fine as long as we just speak up. Oh, man. 
Okay, we're going to start off with our uh, cross-examination. Uh, we'll start off with Devin once again. Uh, continue to start your seat, and uh, we'll get started. All right, 15 minutes starts now. All right, Mike, uh, thank you for that presentation. So just, uh, I guess, some questions I would have for you regarding that. Um, you say that God has all power. It seemed like you were making a distinction between maybe um, there being like a mighty God and then Jesus is like a lesser, lower God. Is that what, you're, is that what you believe? Um, repeat that question again. Yeah, you seem to say uh, in your opening there that God was like a mighty God, and then Jesus is like a lower, lesser God. Is that what you hold? Yes, and the, I'll follow that back up with when you create something, you're over whatever you created. And I would back that by scriptures that clearly says God created Jesus. Okay. What are the scriptures that say God created Jesus? Mm -hmm. All right. In Revelation, we can turn to a couple. Revelations 3.14. Revelations 3.14. I get time for it. Get the, will this be on the screen? I don't have it on the screen. Would you like us to read it? Yeah, if somebody wants to read it. All right. Um, 3.14, you said? Yes. Okay. Um, and to the angel of the, uh, the church in Blair, this means, right? He soon says the Amen, faithful and true witness, the beginning and of the creation of God. Right. So that's Jesus right there. The beginning of the creation of God. Jesus was the beginning of the creation of God. And if somebody can get Colossians. Well, real quick before we, we go with that. So um, the Greek word there is, I believe it's arche, and it's saying that Jesus is the one that created. So it's not saying, um, I'm using the ESV. So 14 says, and to the angel of the church in Laodicea writes the word, uh, the amen, the faithful and true witness. The beginning of God's creation exactly. right so it doesn't say that Jesus is created by God or the first thing created there's words there's Greek words that could be used for that uh, but they're not in that particular text the Greek word there is arche okay we would probably have to agree to disagree with that interpretation okay because um, okay. it says these things say that amen the faithful and true witness you know that's Jesus mm -hmm. the beginning of the creation of God. The beginning of the creation of God. Yeah, so again, uh, yeah, just go back to, to that uh, Greek word, which is RK, which is uh, originator or uh, the cause maker, the fabricator, not that Jesus was uh, created. Because the other, that, that would contradict other passages that I use in, in my argument, for instance. And then we can follow that up because the Bible, we got to use the Bible to interpret the Bible. Sure. So when we follow that up with Colossians 1, 15 through 17. Colossians 1, 15 through 17. And I can read this one. So Colossians 1, 15. Who is the image of the invisible God? Who is that? Who is the image of the invisible God? Jesus. All right. The firstborn of every creature. Who is that? Uh, this, uh, Jesus. Yep. Jesus. Mm -hmm. Firstborn of every creature. For by him, 
were all things created by this firstborn creature, Jesus. Well, wait a second. What what translation? What are you reading? This is King James. Okay, so uh, it says um, in the ESV, he's the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. So nowhere does it call Jesus a creature. You want to go back to Greek him, or now? So, go to Greek. Greek. Oh, this is uh, yeah. just between the two. Uh, oh, talking oh, about sorry. Part. Okay, please go comments from this. Yeah, so I mean, with, with the Greek, um, there's a Greek word, I think it's prototokos, that could be used. Um, it's, there's a word that could be used that says Jesus is the first created. Um, it doesn't say that, though. That, yeah. that, that Greek word is actually not used there. All right. But I want to state again in the King James Version, the firstborn of every creature. And then continue. For by him were all things created by Jesus mm -hmm. that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether there be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Again, that 15th verse is super key when it says the firstborn of every creature. Yeah, so it, uh, again, I would just say... Um, it's not saying that he is uh, the first created. There's Greek words for that. He doesn't use that. So I'll, I'll move on with the next uh, question. And can I read one more? Ephesians 3. Well, um, I'll let you do that on your own. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just because my, my time's going quick here. Um, so when you're saying that, um, for example, um, God is greater than Jesus, I guess how would it be you understand maybe the position between the Father and the Son? Just like um, I have, a, I have two sons. My sons um, uh, were born from me. That is, I am their father. They are my son. Mm -hmm. In that context, I'm always going to be the father. They're always going to be the son. Those are two separate, separate things. And then if you go back to that scripture, it says, "I go back to my father." You should rejoice for that because my father, the Word of God, remember, it's a supreme authority. He yep. is greater. Than I. Yeah, so what does that mean, I guess, greater than I? Because what I would say uh, as a Trinitarian is, it's not speaking of ontological nature, but rather the position. Because um, you have, again, I would say numerous passages, of the ones I showed, that I, would, that I, I think showed Jesus as God. It's not saying that uh, he's lesser uh, equality as far as in nature. Rather, there's a difference in function or position. And there's, there's scriptures, multiple scriptures say Jesus came from from God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so see, and, and I think that's where some of the confusion may come. I have no problem saying like there's a hierarchy or there's a, um, a function within the doctrine of the Trinity. So the Father sends the Son. The Son submits to the Father. Uh, but it doesn't follow that because of that, therefore, that the Son uh, doesn't have the same nature or isn't equal with the Father. It just means the, uh, there's a role or there's a function. Just as your wife isn't a lesser being than you, Correct. right? You both have equality. It's just a different different roles, right? Yes. So that's what I would say um, to that. So, um, but you do believe in something is if something creates something is greater. Well, right. But see, that would assume that um, uh, the Father created Jesus, which I don't agree with. I think uh, the passages, in fact, we can look at some of those uh, arguments that I gave. Um, let's look at um, um, argument two, um, or well, we can just look at argument one. Um, only God created the universe and everything in it. That's premise one. Do you agree with that? I believe God created Jesus in Genesis 1 and 1, and then through Jesus created everything else. So you believe in Genesis 1-1 one, one that says that God created Jesus? Yes. So in Genesis 1-1, one, one, where does it say God created Jesus? <laughs> All right, and then following again, Revelation 3, 14, and Colossians 1, 15, they say it, and here it says, in the beginning, God, which is a spirit, pure intellect, created the heaven and the earth. What is the heaven and earth? 
I would say this verse is, is referring to space, time, and matter, but I have no problem saying that Jesus is, uh, when you keep saying God is spirit, I agree with that. Mm-hmm. Jesus, you know, is a, uh, has a divine nature. Um, yeah, uh, Luke 24, 39, you know, talks with the, the flesh and bone, Luke 420, John 4, 24, spirit doesn't have to have flesh and bone. So I agree with that. Um, God is a spirit. Jesus is God, therefore Jesus is a spirit. But I don't see... You're going to other passages, but I don't see anywhere in Genesis one that's, that that's, says God that the Father created Jesus in Genesis one. So, what can you explain one and two when it says the earth was without form and void? Well, you made the claim again. This is you know I love you. Just yeah. hold your feet to the fire here. You made the claim that Genesis one one says in that text the Father created Jesus. So Interpretation, that's what we interpret. It. That's, what, that's what we interpret from other scriptures. Okay, so it's not particularly in this text. It does not say explicitly that God created Jesus. Well, where does it say implicitly in Genesis 1-1 that the Father created Jesus? Again, you have to use the Bible to interpret the Bible. Okay, so it's not in this passage. You'd have to go to other passages to try and show Correct. that. That's how Correct? you interpret okay. the Bible. Well, right, but... I would say if you're going to say, you know, it's in Genesis 1-1, there's got to be something that shows that. But there's nothing that shows that. There's nothing that even hints at that. So that's where you would go to Revelation 3 or Colossians 1. And then I can see, yeah, you have to do some interpretive method there. And then going back to the scripture, all scripture is used Mm -hmm. um, for doctrine and reproof. And that's how you come to truth. Because if you take... Um, I agree. Jesus saying, "Eat my flesh and drink my blood." Yeah, and don't use other scriptures to support that. You're going to be lost. Right. So that's all I'm doing right there. Same thing I think you would do for eating my flesh, drinking my blood. Well, I, I, yeah, I, I would just say in this particular passage, um, I don't see anything that says the Father created Jesus. But um, so premise one: only God created the universe and everything in it. So it seems like you're saying that. You don't believe God created the universe and everything in it. You believe Jesus created the universe and everything in it. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Um, According to the word of God, I would say that. I guess what, as I see in Genesis 1, 1, it says in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So do you believe God created the heavens and the earth? Again, going back to God is his pure intellect. He thought the world into existence. So God created the heavens and the earth. Yes. And by this you mean the Father created the heavens and the earth? Yes. Okay. Well, then you would agree with then with premise one that only God created the universe and everything in it. In that context. Okay. In that scripture. Okay. So uh, premise two, that sounds like you can see premise one. Premise two, Jesus created the universe and everything in it. Um, do, you, do you deny that or do you accept that? I accept that. And I would use the creation and formation there. With God being a spirit, he can think it into existence, giving the Son the power to create everything. Just yeah. like he said, he is the Word of God. So I think the issue is, so, so it says that you're saying you would agree with premise one, mm-hmm. um, and, but it also, you're also saying you agree with premise two. So, and maybe you do agree with the conclusion that therefore Jesus is God. You had said in one of your, in your opening statement that you actually said Jesus was fully God. Do you believe that Jesus is fully God? I believe Jesus was fully God and fully human. He had the full divine nature of God because he came forth from God. He was created by God. Um, Are were you created by God? Yes. Do you have? Are you? uh, Do you have the full divine nature here? Are you fully God? We can if we turn to Second Peter chapter 3 and read that he well said we can take do you on believe that do you believe nature. do you believe that you are fully god as well yes okay we can be by we can be or we are by his spirit we are by his spirit we are adopted or by his spirit we are actually god the bible calls us gods okay so how many gods is there that exist there, the Bible said there'll be many gods, many, and lords, many. But many there's tr- only one God, the Father. How many true gods is there? One. One true okay. God, the Father. So then it can't be the case that we're all gods, if there's only one true God. Right? We can be like God. Be, being like God is different than being God. Yeah, that's the you same know. argument I would say to you when you're saying Jesus is God when it's only one true God. 
Well, uh, I would say that the, the problem is with that. The scriptures explicitly say Jesus is God. Jesus in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. Not can become or is like, but it says is God, was God. And I can say my son, my natural son, is me. How can I say that? Well, I thought you said earlier okay. that there were the, uh, distinct beings. But how, that's what I'm asking. How can my son be me? Your son can't be you because you're different beings. But if you say, if you took my blood, his blood, you're going to know that that's my son. Sure. There's a relation there. Sure. That's the oneness of God and Jesus in spirit. Oneness in spirit. Yeah, I think the analogy, of course, breaks down because spirit's not flesh and flesh and bone. But um, no comments, please. It looks like we're about 30 seconds out. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'll, uh, I'll yield the, the last 30 seconds. All right, we start off 15 minutes, uh, cross-examination by uh, Michael Abraham. All right. Um, uh, beginning now. When you said that, well, I'll just start, it's, I'll just start with what's on the board. How would you explain that 28th verse? And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. Yeah, so I would say that um, this passage, like a lot of the other passages where it's talking about kind of the different um, subordination or the function, um, within the doctrine of the Trinity, again, you have um, different roles. So it's not that one is um, you know, not equal or less than, it's just that the Son is submissive to the Father. So it wouldn't show that Jesus isn't God. It just shows there's different roles within the doctrine of the Trinity. And then how would you explain when Jesus said, my father is greater? Than yeah, that's a great question. John 14, 28, right? Yeah. Yep. So uh, Philippians 2, 5 through 11 talks about how Jesus empties himself. He didn't uh, regard uh, uh, equality with God to be grasped. Uh, and so in that particular verse, I would say that it's not speaking again of his ontological nature, but rather the function or the, um, you know, the position that the Father is in. It's not, um, it's not dealing with uh, the nature of God. Gotcha. That's what I would say with that, yeah. And this language right here, I think, trips us up a lot. And that's where we get confused to where we're saying Jesus is actually God. But John 17, 21 says that they all may be one. That is Father, Son, and us. Talk about us. As thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee. That they also, talking about us, may be one in us, God that the world may believe that thou has sent me. That oneness is in spirit. We can take on that divine nature in Second Peter chapter let's see, Second Peter chapter 1 Yeah, that's right. Chapter 1, verse 4. I'll start at verse 3. Second Peter 1 and 3. According as his divine power have given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that have called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And that precious promise, that's really why we are striving, our Christians really. We have that promise of taking on that same divine nature as Jesus. And it calls us heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ. Why is the separation there if they're the same? Well, and I guess maybe that's where there, there's, I'm having some confusion. When you're saying that 
let, repeat what you just said about um, what was it about kind of our goals as Christians to be divine. take on that divine nature too. Yeah, okay. rid this 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 fleshly nature and so, take on that. Divine and maybe nature. maybe we're just using maybe we mean different things by that. But when you say divine nature, I'm thinking God. <coughs> so when you're saying that we can um, partake in the divine nature, what do you mean by that? Do you mean like actually become become God? Um, we're going we're going to become like Christ. So what does that mean, though, to become like Christ? Do, does our nature change? Um, are we do we like are we have omniscience or omnipotence, omnipresence? On a is level, it? on a level, right now, the Bible says when we um, receive the Holy Spirit, okay, we are a we are new creatures. That divine nature begins to develop, and as we go through our Christian journey. And we overcome like Jesus overcame everything contrary to God. Mm -hmm. And we die in that state. We're going to take on that same divine nature as Jesus when he was resurrected from the dead and be joint heirs with Christ. So divine nature, do you mean like being able to work miracles, create the universe, th like things like that? Or do you just mean, um, you know, basically like the scripture talking about being joint heirs with Jesus? Um, I guess I guess what I'm saying is there's one God, right? Only He has that nature. We can't ever have that based upon the, based upon the type of being that we are. So that's why know, I use Mormon the word. theology, for example, says you, um, people can go through a process of exaltation where they become God. Is that kind of like what you, what you're saying, where you can get to a God status, or are you just? I'm not quite sure. The purpose of Jesus coming down on earth and taking on flesh was because we had no example, no savior to overcome the things that we deal with every day in human life. You with me? Mm -hmm. All right, so Jesus came down from heaven, took on the nature of man, being fully God because he came from God, he was birthed from God, but he had Mary's nature, which is a fleshly nature. He came and he lived a life where he was totally obedient to God. He was tempted in all points, like you and I. Right. That's why he's our Savior. But he never yielded to that okay. nature. Can I ask you a question? So yes. when you're saying he was fully God, mm -hmm. so what um, in the essential attributes in his ontological nature, what was different between him and the Father? Because you're saying fully God. Yeah, flesh. Okay, before he took on flesh, right? So you believe he existed before he took on flesh. Definitely, the Word of God okay. says that. So in his essential nature, in his attributes, what attributes did the Father have that he didn't have? The if Father, he's fully God. The Father created him. But if they, if he is and he had fully a, he God. Had a, and he had a form. God created Jesus, and Jesus had a form. God has no form. Jesus had a form, a, a divine um, nature about him, similar to that divine body he had when he was resurrected. He could walk. He could walk through walls. Well, the text actually doesn't say he walks. It says he appears. But and we believe he he walked through walls. We believe that. Yeah, so I, I guess for me, just when you're saying that um, he he is fully God, has the same nature as God, to me that just sounds like what you're saying is. They have the same nature. If they have the same nature, then they're they're not different. If they are different, then they don't have the same nature. Then he's not fully God because he's lacking things that the Father doesn't have. Therefore, he can't be fully God. But if the Scripture says we are going to take on that same divine nature, you can have that same nature and be different. We're not going to be. We're not going to merge into God, mm -hmm. but we are going to take on that nature of God, that spiritual don't, nature of God. Don't, don't you see a logical um, contradiction, though, when, we, when you say that Jesus is fully God, but then you're saying he doesn't have all the same attributes and essential nature as the Father. If he doesn't have all the attributes and essential nature as the Father, he's not fully God. If he was, there wouldn't be a distinction between them. They'd be the same. But he has all of the divine power from God. Okay. The scripture says that I have given all power to my son. 
Yeah, well, I believe that's because Jesus is God is why he has that divine nature and, and power. So it, to me, I, you know, I don't, I don't have an issue with those particular And it's a scripture that says the reason at, at the end of the scripture, it says it pleased the father to give the son this divine nature. And I want to put it on the board yeah. if, I, if I have it. It's not the divine nature. It doesn't say divine nature. Uh, let's see if I got it right here. Thanks in John. <laughs> Hebrews. You talk about the divine name. Uh, it says, let's see, and please the Father. Let me put that in. Please the Father. Please the Father. There you go. It says, uh, Oh, back back to Colossians one. <laughs> um, <laughs> Stay there all night. Yeah. Here we go. Uh, Colossians one. Um, I'm gonna start at eighteen this time. And he is the head of the body, the church. Now we know that's Jesus Christ. He's the head of the body. Yeah. Who is the beginning? Here we go again. The firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him, that is Jesus, should all fullness dwell. And another scripture said he gave Jesus the spirit, the divine nature without measure. We all are measured out a portion of the spirit. But for Jesus, he did not put any limits, any measure on that divine nature. And the difference between Jesus and man, of course, Jesus was born of the spirit. So that's why Jesus is born of the spirit and he had Mary's natural flesh. So that's my understanding of Jesus born of the spirit. So he has that divine nature, fully God. That's mm -hmm. what that's what I mean by that. That's the context of that. Born of the spirit. And then he had Mary's flesh. So he had to be, he was fully man. And so what you mean by... 2 Peter 1, 4. 2 Peter 1, 4. What, what you mean by fully God is oh, um, not that he has the same nature as God, but rather God gave him uh, certain powers or granted him certain powers, like a representative. I think if, if uh, I kind of understand what you're saying there. He had, no, he had full, the full power of God. God granted him that full power So do, do you believe that God is omnipresent, for example, that God is everywhere at the same time? Yes. Do you believe he's all-knowing? Yes. Okay. Um, uh, he knows all things. Yes. So did Jesus have those attributes? Jesus did not know everything. No. Okay. So but that does not take away from the Well, how can you be nature. fully God then? How can you be fully God if he doesn't have the same things that the Father has? You're saying the Father has um, um, Remember he's, omni omniscience, mm -hmm. but the Son doesn't. Like, again, going back to the natural, then I bring it back to the spiritual. Um, yeah, it needs a, you need a man, you need a woman to birth something. Mm -hmm. All right? My son is fully me, and he's fully my wife. Going back to the Spirit, who is Jesus' Father? It's not a man, it's not Joseph. It's the Spirit. So he's fully Spirit. And he takes on Mary's flesh, so he's fully flesh. Yeah, I guess what I'm saying is it just seems to be contradictory to say he has the same nature as the Father, mm -hmm. but yet he's not, on, uh, he's not omniscient mm -hmm. uh, because there's things he doesn't know. Because that goes well, there's back. there's things he doesn't know, then he's not fully the same as the Father. That goes he's back lacking. to, yeah, that goes back to the understanding of God created him. That lets you know God well, is right. greater so if you, than no, Jesus. So if you're going to say God created them, then I guess what I'm saying is you can say that. <clears throat> but then you can't also say they're fully equal or he's uh, fully God. The Bible the Bible says he thought it not Robert to be equal with him. How is that equal? Right. What is that equal? Well, as a Trinitarian, I could explain that. I but explain. if I'm saying that Jesus is a created being, then you couldn't say that. You that could say be, that, that it, be it, because the Bible says that. And it says we are going to be equal. Not it doesn't. It's not talking about our ontological nature. It's not saying we're going to be omniscient and omnipresent and omnipotent. No, it's still, I don't right, agree right. That, no. So it's 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 not. But what is that? When well, you use the word equal, the Bible used the word equal. So what is that equal? Is that spirit? Is that 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 spirit? That divine spirit? That divine power? 
Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I think our views of the Holy Spirit is different, but uh, oh, here is this one. Uh, we're at one minute. <coughs> Ball it's time. Court. All right. Um, and again, going back to um, God, Jesus, and then Jesus being God, um, I think it's very, very important the source of your information. And where is this source coming from where we think that God, and he transformed into Jesus, he transformed into the Holy Spirit, and then he transformed back to Jesus, he transformed back to the Holy Ghost. That, that, that understanding of God and Jesus, and they're all the same, yeah. I think comes from a Greek mythology type of understanding. So yeah. I think this, I would end with that, that the source of that information is very, very important. And I, and I would agree with that, which is why I would never adopt that view. Mm -hmm. That's not the Trinitarian view. Mm -hmm. right. All right. Any time. Okay, if you guys are good, uh, we can go straight to conclusions, or if you'd like to take a break. Oh, yeah, yeah. We can, uh, we can do that. So um, you. Yeah, I mean, uh, sure. we can go, we can go. Do the five, you want to do the five minute conclusion? Five minute conclusion. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, so uh, I, I presented a case tonight that um, I think Jesus Christ is God. I gave three arguments. Um, only God created the universe and everything in it. Uh, when asked, Michael agreed with that premise. Premise two, Jesus created the universe and everything in it. Michael also agreed with that premise. So the conclusion follows, then therefore Jesus is God. Uh, you have scriptures that plainly say Jesus is God, such as uh, John, uh, John 1, 1, and 1 through 3, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. Um, so uh, none of the arguments that I gave were uh, even dealt with or even touched. The second argument that I gave, only God is uncreated. Jesus is uncreated, therefore Jesus is God. We saw some passages that attempted to show that Jesus was created, but when you look at them under examination, they're not. Colossians 1.15 through 17, you could use the Greek word that says first created. The Bible doesn't use that. It uses the word firstborn. And that's talking about preeminence and dealing with um, preeminence. And there's a lot of different passages you could look where I think it's Abraham uh, calls its like one of the last born his firstborn. And it's not dealing biologically, it's dealing with preeminence. Uh, and then he went to Revelation 3.14, but the Greek word art uh, is not talking about Jesus being uh, the first thing created, but rather the originator of creation. Uh, and so the verses that he tried to, to show that Jesus was created uh, simply don't work. And the verses that I gave showing that uh, Jesus was not created, um, you know, showing, for example, that he created the universe. If he created the universe, then nothing can create him. If he creates, uh, the scripture says, everything, John, uh, I believe it's John 1, 3, nothing was made that was not made by him, uh, then he himself can't have a maker or nothing would be here because you wouldn't have a prime mover. You wouldn't have existence itself. Uh, and so the second argument isn't touched. The third argument I didn't I didn't really get to give, so I won't bring that up now. Um, but you know I I appreciate the dialogue. You know I think it's good to uh, you know sharpen our swords and be able to, to talk about these things in in a good calm uh, friendly way. Um, I do think uh, as you as you saw at the end uh, for people who are Trinitarians, people who understand Trinitarian theology. Is a complete misrepresentation of what the doctrine of the Trinity is. Uh, oneness theology, uh, Pentecostalism, oneness Pentecostalism, and they say that you know you have God the Father who morphs into God the Son and then morphs into the Holy Spirit. That's not what Orthodox Trinitarian theology has ever taught. Um, if you can look at the confessions, you can look at the creeds, you can look at the scriptures, uh, the Bible itself. You know, it's not like you're going to find one verse that that teaches the Trinity. What you see is uh, several passages that say there's one God that exists, several passages that show Jesus as God, the ones I showed tonight, uh, and several passages that call the Holy Spirit God. 
Now, again, we can have that discussion on the Trinity at another time. Um, but uh, I think a lot of it is just it's a misunderstanding of the doctrine of the Trinity, the roles and function of Jesus. Uh, the verses I said, I said there was going to be a lot of those verses that were brought up. Um, and all it is is it just shows Jesus has a human nature, which, you know, which I would fully agree with. So I'll go ahead and, again, thank you. Thank you I for coming. I'll just summarize my yeah, of course, too. Is that, um, I think we kind of veered off from that first bullet. Um, the Bible is the supreme authority. Um, when I presented the Word of God, the supreme authority, I, um, it was then um, sublined by man's interpretation um, from what I can picture or understand it from when it clearly says uh, Jesus was the first creature, um, firstborn. So the Bible has to be, and that's the, that's the key when you are discussing scripture doctrine, the Bible has to be the, the supreme authority. And the word of God clearly points out that God is a separate being from Jesus. It never called Jesus invisible. It never says he has no form. Jesus always had a form. God is the invisible God. God is the eternal God. Jesus is the everlasting Father. Eternal, everlasting, that's the difference. And Jesus gets his authority, and he, when he was on this earth, he taught his disciples and the early church this very thing. Jesus gets his authority and deity from God. That is, he is second in the Godhead. He gets his power, his authority, his nature from God. And he is separate from God. Does not take away from his, again, his deity, his divine nature. Being created does not take away from his divine nature. I think that's a mis misconception. And then the Holy Ghost, again, we didn't get to that part really, is the power and divine nature that makes them one, that makes us one, how we can all be one um, in unity. So that's the little summary of that. All right. All right, let's give you guys a hand. Uh, I appreciate both of you guys for uh, doing the work. Uh, it took a lot of preparation, I know, to make these presentations and to do the studying that you did. So uh, congratulations to you. Appreciate uh, the work that you did. Uh, we're going to open it up for uh, Q&A. Uh, but the, the, question, the, the rules for Q&A is um, we're not here to make statements. We're not here to uh, explain our point of view. We want to present questions, OK? Um, so we'll start off with uh, the students. Um, if you have any questions, please present those, and then we'll move on to. What time do we need to stop the Q and A? What time do we need to? What time is it right now? It is nine twenty-two. Okay. What What time would you say? Go to nine forty-five or something. Uh, sure. We can. Yeah, it's been like. Or do we need to? Minutes, okay. Do you just want to go fifteen minutes for the Q and A? I right, told so we'll the students we only have the room until nine, and so yeah. we want to be gracious to the students. So, are you good with fifteen minutes? Mm -hmm. As long as you get there. Next one. <laughs> um, people, if you guys have questions, uh, we have our little broke down mic here. Anybody out there in internet land wants to get us a good mic? Um, <laughs> uh, feel free just to come up speaking to the mic, that way we get it. Um, on our video and we'll just leave the mic here though that way it can actually get what we're saying for, for the sake of scholarship now you know about scholarship um i i think i can really just easily say this that i just want to make two comments that, but they won't be questions but just two quick comments going back to the greek um on revelations 13 that word okay the first definition of it is, is the first. So that ak okay, would be the first creation of God. That would be the Greek. And then going back to Colossians um, 1.15, that Greek word there is thesis. And it means creation, just like an architect would create a building. And it says he was the first born creature. That means creation, a building of such. It's, it's absolutely no room other than something created by someone else. That's the only comment someone that. And you can, that's the Greek. Yeah. Well, we've got the Greek, and uh, it, it doesn't say that. 
We can show, we can look at the words. Prototokos, prototesis. You can pull it up. Pastor, where do you got the Greek on that? Yeah, which passage are we looking at? Colossians. Colossians 1.15. Yep, Colossians 1.15. 1.15. Yeah, and from now on, we prefer questions, not I, statements. I'm finished. I'm finished. Just yeah. academic. And, Ac and, academic accuracy. Yeah. We're, yeah. we're at university. <laughs> yep, yeah, we will definitely. Prototokos yep. is uh, verse 15. Prototokos. Accuracy. No, no, thesis. Protokos. I have a question. Yep, go ahead. Yeah. If you just want to come up here, you can. Um, yeah, there's thesis. K T I S I S. All right, while they're looking that up. Um, so and both of y'all referenced um, John 1.1, 1, 1, Jesus being the word of God. And that particularly interested me because um, as an English major, I regularly interpret texts. Um, and so, and both of y'all were saying you can um, interpret this text in different ways. Uh, John 1.1, 1, 1, where it says uh, Jesus was the word, um, and he... Uh, the word was God, the word was with God, and then, um, I can't remember exactly the, the verse off the top of my head, but the word was God was an important part. Um, I think that, that both of y'all would say, like y'all would say different things about. So um, in that context, I heard, I would ask, what would w word mean to you? Is it a literal spoken word, um, which would back up the view that Jesus has created, because you said Jesus would have been spoken into creation or something like that. Yes. Um, and then, or is it a metaphorical word in the sense that um, it's this representation of the word being a, the promise of God? Um, personally, I think it's uh, connecting to the Old Testament promise of God to save his people Israel, as well as using them as a priestly nation to include all into the new creation of heaven and earth. But um, I would ask what each of y'all would define that phrase word as in that context of the verse. And um, I would agree with what you said. Um, the word was with God. That is, God spoke the word into existence. And in another uh, text in the Bible, Jesus was talking and he said, my words are spirit and they are life. That's the same. If all and if you follow First John one all the way through, that's all talking about Jesus. Yep, I would I would agree. So I'm just saying, you know, it says the word was with God. The word was God. It doesn't say uh, God created the word. He didn't say that. Um, and I would, you know, I think you know you give a pretty good, you know, view or interpretation of that. So I mean, I think we would agree with. Uh, with what the passage is saying, I think we're just interpreting it different, right? right? Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. So. Um, question. Please. Yes. Um, considering that the problem with all created beings of God, the soul, mm -hmm. has been that we want to be God. Mm -hmm. Considering the devil wanted to be like God, mm -hmm. and uh, wanted to be God rather. So if the problem with created beings wanting to be like God or wanting to be God is a problem. Mm -hmm. How can Jesus be a created being? You see, because mm -hmm. he claims to be God. Yes. And God didn't have any problem with that part. No. Jesus was a um, heavenly, part of the heavenly host. He, when he was created with God, he did not have that very thing that's in us that goes against God. He didn't have that until he came down in the form of a man. When he found himself in the fashion as a man, being in the form of a servant, <coughs> then he had to humble himself to that nature. But when he was with God in heaven, just like when we are with heaven God. Was never man, so, but he had a, God had a problem with him trying to be God. Say, say the devil, time. Lucifer, was never man. And, and, that's, God had and that's, a I would love to talk about. Him. Yeah, yeah so I would love to God talk about the, the, the devil. To be God. Yeah. I would love to talk about the devil. Um, probably our next our next topic okay. because um, <laughs> Lucifer does not mean devil. Lucifer just means bright light. And um, if you follow that back, Lucifer in the Bible one time, 
If you follow Isaiah back up, it'll tell you who Lucifer was. It was the king of Babylon. He was the brightest light because he was the ruling nation. That's not where God is. Think about it. Why we why would we want to go to a heaven where God is, where a, a, a fight can break out? In heaven where God is. That's a misinterpretation. That's why I would say that. Jesus, the reason Jesus is our Savior again, he had to come down from heaven, be born of a virgin Mary. He had to take on this flesh and kill it and crucify it and submit himself to God to go back to Why? heaven. For what reason? Because we had no one. We had no example, no one available to overcome this nature. Adam cursed us. Adam what cursed was the us. sin of Adam? The sin... <laughs> the sin of Adam was just like you said. Adam wanted to be God. But Adam, look at it. Adam had flesh. Created being there. Adam had flesh. Adam and Jesus are totally different. The Bible says the first man, Adam, was earthly. He was made of the earth. The second man, Adam, he called him a second Adam, was spiritual. That's powerful. First Adam, made of earth. He had flesh. The second Adam, Jesus, he was made of spirit. That's two different things. That's why Jesus had to come down, take on flesh, and kill this old nature that we had that Adam damned us with, that Adamic nature. So we'll go, Jesus we'll go could Jesus. not be a created being if God had no problem with, with him calling himself God. That's the point I'm trying to make. Say it Jesus one more time. could never have been a created being if God had no problem. It's a scripture that said there be there be terrestrial bodies and celestial bodies. Which one you would say Adam He's had? God. Which Jesus one you would say God. Adam had? You have two, terrestrial and celestial. Which one you would say Adam had? Currently terrestrial, later on. Remember the story Jesus gave about the man who married, a woman who married seven husbands, brothers? Yes, yes. And they were asking him who would be the I see it, I husband. See, yeah, I see the error. And God, Jesus told them, you don't know. There are some things yeah. to go away when we think about no, it's clear. Uh, with our I, finite minds is becomes very difficult to conceive. That part is clear. But, yeah, I think I think you uh you got to understand. Does heaven mean where God at every time is mentioned in the Bible? That's the that's that's the key. That's the understanding. Yeah, we got to move on to another. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna be Thank clear. You. He needs to clarify that I was correct on that. That's important. That creature he is like an architect. He needs to make that correction quickly. Yeah. So the word is prototokos, and then no creature. The and creature. Then, and then, so, so the confusion was, is that we were referring to two different words that are both in the same verse, uh, prototokos and ketisos. So it does is, does Colossians 1, 15 say that Jesus was the first created being? Or the, the first, first born. born of all creation. Is, 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 is no, it accurate? what she said. You said it was the no, first it's an accurate translation. And I'm saying that there is a Greek word that says created and one that says no. firstborn. The Greek word that's used is not created. No, it's, it's you have to look born. at it. It's not firstborn. The creature. The creature is the word that he's interpreting. It's yeah. not firstborn. It's the creature. He was a creature. That is like a creation. There's no way that, that that's what it is. is that so I think, well, I think he's, he's, he's looking at the passage and he's, he's saying that the correct interpretation would be the firstborn of all creatures. That's what it That's says. What it says. That's what it says. It's, that that creature right there cannot be anything other than something no, that was created. And that's, that's not, talking about not the same as saying he was the first thing created, exactly. or the first. No, creature. All I'm saying is that, that that's Jesus all I'm was saying. created. If it wanted to created. say the word that no, it's, it's not. Uh, and, and I would add to that is right afterward it says he's the first one of all creation, for by him all things were created. So that would. No, that's and that's where it says with the exception of him, all things will be with the exception. That's that's how it is. Right. Right. Oh, next yeah. question. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go back here. No. Yeah. Students first. Yeah. yeah. Right. So uh, I have a question for you. At one point, you said that Jesus is less than God, but had the Father is greater than the mm -hmm. Son. And at the Bible, point, the Bible says yes. And at another point, you said that Jesus is equal with God. Yes. Which is that interpretation of equal is the key. How can I be equal with Brother Devin tonight? You are the same type of being on the same level. Equal in mindset. Equal minds. 
Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. That's the equal. Let this mind, let this same spirit be in you. That's the equal part. Jesus, when Jesus called him, when Jesus said God was his father, the Pharisees and the scribes, what did they say? They wanted to kill him. Why? Because he made himself equal with God. Just by saying God is my father, not I am God. God is my father. It does not, him being the son does not take away from his divine nature. And they knew what he was saying. He was making himself, the Bible clearly says they wanted to kill him because he made himself equal with God. Yeah, that's why I say that that term son of God has a particular reference and meaning. And that's that's what they knew. It's like you're saying that's that's why they wanted to kill and him. That's that equal. Himself they equal. used the word equal. How? Mm -hmm. They understood that. They understood what he was saying. Yep. Yeah, I agree. So would you say that equal has the same definition that you hear for the definition of one on the paper being in agreement for union with like qualities? Yes. Yes. So and when it says we can be one too. If these are synonymous then do the Jews take a problem with Jesus saying that he is in agreement or union with God? That's 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 that's, yes, that's perfect. That's a, that's, a that's that's a revelation. Um, I would like us to clarify what them what they were talking about with the scriptures, all the ones including where he said um the second one was saying all except something else, what they were talking about, and like I would like us to read those scriptures with the pure translation off the computer, like the pure the Greek. Greek thing, exactly what it's saying, yeah, all scriptures yeah. involved in that whole okay. point with exactly. knowing exactly what that means. Well, I think I think the I think the I'll challenge with that is that, up on anything, is that, that we are uh, Greek. 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 there are Greek. there are. Uh, Different there. interpretations of some keywords and op but operations. But you read the exact interpretation off of that with the Greek. In other words, just put the Greek on the board. That's all she's asking for. Put the Greek up there. How many people here know Greek? If you're going to put it on the board. No, you do know how to say it. No, no, no. I understand that. But there's parsing involved, too. You need to know the parsing in order to understand the Greek. And the context. It parses it for you. It does. Can you understand the context? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. What's an error space? Can we go off of what exactly he read? I think he's just wanting them to like ex like show us what they're what his The problem is unless the was, unless you people want to read the verse was in English. What? You wanted to see the verse in English that we were discussing? I wanted to see the scriptures y'all were talking about, right? And then the Greek that was mentioned that you translated from the computer. So I want you to basically read that with the translation purely as exactly what it's saying and those scriptures involved in the point that they were discussing without any like well it can be interpreted no what did it say like what does it read you know what put, it, put it right on the board you turn my computer down. you want to plug your computer up we got like 29 wow. seconds so. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but if you want to look at this i already have it up i would like it to be up okay. there yeah. we got a question right here Oh, it's, it's very important that we do that because it seems like transparency. That, yeah, it, it's. I mean, we had a that was a big topic when we that was discussed, huge. and from what I heard, kind of quietly, there was an error made, but that could affect all of the minds and the thoughts and opinions about the scripture that was being discussed. And if there's an error made, just as you know. Openly and loudly, as we said, one thing that there's an error, maybe we need to correct that error. Um, Absolutely. Show yep. up for everybody. Hold it up. Hold it up. I will, I will gladly stand by that it does not say Jesus was the first created or the first creature or the, or the first created being. Let everybody just see it for themselves. I, I'm not going to say another word like this guy. Oh, you've been saying something all night. I'm telling you something. So here's uh, Colossians 1.15, um, trying to highlight it for you here in the Greek. There it is, uh, highlighted in the Greek. Um, you might be able to zoom in a little bit here. Uh, yeah, there it is. So there's the Greek. 
Uh, actually, we might be able to. I might even be able to pull up an interlinear or something that might be helpful. Of course, here's the translation of it right here. Yeah, so that, there's an ESV translation right there. I can possibly put that up. Ah, whoops. It doesn't matter what translation it's going to say the same thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, you know, we, you know what? I, I guess my uh, my contention would be um, Trinitarian theology talks about Jesus being the eternally begotten Son of God, which means that uh, in according to to Trinitarian theology, uh, this is this is uh, a an ordered relationship between the Father and the Son. Uh, that exists from eternity. <laughs> now he's opening and, it up for discussion. Now I'm gonna. And uh, since um, he's not on the panel, am I able to discuss? Well, uh, you guys asked me to come up and put this up, but uh, let's just keep in mind we have like five minutes before we need to go, just to make yeah. sure that so we don't want to. We don't want to because he's putting this spin in. Words, let people read it for themselves. I'm not, I'm not saying anything. I'm just saying let's keep in mind to keep it out. Because we don't believe in the Trinity doctrine. This, this is my point. This was, this was my whole point with this. Um, again, the Greek for firstborn. Um, proto with Tito, which would give us uh, firstborn, and that is what we find here in Colossians. No, it's thesis with the one we'll be looking at, sir. It's not the protocol, it's thesis. It's to create the way it says creature. The word, the word that we're talking about right here is creation. Which one? First, we're talking about this one right here. Oh, so it's a question. No, which word? First created is what I'm saying. There's a different, there's a Greek word for firstborn. There's a Greek. Um, it's a context. There's a Greek word for firstborn. There's a Greek word for first created. What all I'm saying is, it's not first created, doesn't just say, creature. He's not first created. He's just creature. He's a creature. They were Jesus referring is to the creature. creation it's, word. It's, yeah, that's, that's the creature. The that's they the were creature. Not, that's the, not the not the firstborn. That's, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. That's so he's saying creature. Creation. Um, my question for that would be: Is he referring to creature? Says creature. Creation. 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 Is he the firstborn of creation as in like, um, for example, when the end times come, he's supposed to be the firstborn of all those of our new bodies that will be created? Well, it, it's, a, it's a term I would say that is talking about preeminence. So you have uh, in the Old Testament, I think it's, I think it's, can you help me out, Kendall? I think it's uh, Abraham or something where he's calling his kid who's actually the last born, the first born. Yeah, David, does, David, 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 David does the same, same thing. thing. So, yes, David yeah. said the same so. thing. All right, I probably need to go ahead and. Yeah, I think. I mean, I think. Wait, I think. Uh, think uh, we'll we'll be here. We'll be here after because. Uh, Cody has a yes, go ahead, Cody. I have a question about the word firstborn. Because doesn't he say in um, the Old Testament when he's trying to get Israel set free from Egypt, doesn't he call Israel my firstborn son, meaning my first mm -hmm. son that I love the most, even though they're not the first nation created. They're the first mm -hmm. in his right. in his mind, like you're my favorite, my most prized nation. That's right. No, my number you're one. Not nation. the first nation I ever put on this earth, but you're the nation I love the most. Preeminent. Yep. The most. Yeah, but it's not even preeminent. Exactly. You don't use more preeminence. What do you mean? I mean, I've explained it. I mean, it's, the key it's, word is creature. Uh, it's not. It's not preeminence. It's not firstborn. It's creature. Creature. And, and you can look at any translation. It's going to say something equivalent to creature. <coughs> that is like a dog or a cat. Uh, you know, that's what. That's what the word is. It's not. I mean, that's what it says. All right. So round two. We get together for round two in a couple months. In Asia. In Asia. Yeah. The, the title the title and the focus of this was was Jesus created and that scripture is definitely important because it calls him a creature that's that's super important what he is is it symbolic or literal though? it's literal 